We know some things can make you age faster, whereas other things slow down your biological aging. In this video, I'm going to talk about this new study that revealed the top 10 things that are associated with accelerated biological aging and the two things that are protective against that and slow down your aging. Do it. So the study is very new, published in March, and uh, it's called Genetic Evidence for Causal Effects of Socioeconomic Lifestyle and Cardiometabolic Factors on Epigenetic Age Acceleration. So they basically uh, used two of these uh, biological age tests or uh, clocks, GrimAge acceleration and uh, PhenoAge acceleration tests, which are based on the DNA methylation, uh, which currently is considered one of the like gold standard ways to assess biological age, and it's based on on the Horvath's clock. Uh, Steve Horvath came up with the epigenetic uh, clock theory of aging. And uh, yeah, it's based measures like this DNA methylation patterns that, you know, gives you like a reference point in terms of what is associated with a certain biological age. And that they actually used studies of the genome-wide association studies of up to 1 million Europeans. And that they pulled the uh, summary statistics from about 34,710 Europeans. They identified 12 and 8 factors causally associated with grim age acceleration and phenoage you know, age acceleration respectively. So number one, the biggest thing that was associated with the greatest speed of biological aging was smoking and it had the strongest risk factor. Number two was higher alcohol intake. Number three, higher waist circumference. Number four, daytime napping. Number five, higher body fat percentage. Number six, higher body mass index. Number seven, higher C-reactive protein or CRP. Number eight, higher triglycerides. Number nine, childhood obesity. And number 10, type 2 diabetes. So these were the top 10 factors associated with the greatest uh, acceleration of these uh, DNA methylation clocks and uh, their biological age. I think many people aren't surprised by most of them. Like smoking is pretty common knowledge that uh, it's one of the worst things for your health and aging because yeah it just causes a massive amount of oxidative stress and inflammation that uh, raises blood pressure it causes uh, even like insulin resistance increases risk of cardiovascular disease cancer and uh, yeah it's just generally uh, bad for you alcohol intake is also pretty uh, like established to be generally harmful to your health although the uh, moderate consumption of alcohol has been found to be um, actually linked with like you know more longevity and all these blue zones etc they're drinking like small amounts of alcohol Alcohol, like a little bit of wine or something like that but uh, higher alcohol intake in this context just refers to probably like uh, someone who drinks multiple drinks per day I don't think that uh, drinking like you know one uh, or one to two drinks per week probably has like no any significant or any meaningful impact on your longevity but if you over drink and if you drink just you know too many drinks or <laughs> multiple drinks per day then that will accelerate your biological age and increase your mortality as well next up higher waist circumference which is also a pretty uh, known because the higher waist circumference is actually more important than the bmi because the waist circumference will reflect your amount of visceral adiposity and central obesity, which is, you know, the amount of uh, visceral fat around the organs uh, that is actually much more harmful for you than the subcutaneous fat under the skin. And uh, the visceral fat is going to, you know, cause insulin resistance and uh, just um, raises inflammation and causes other harm. Daytime napping is interesting. <laughs> so, uh, you know, usually take a nap if you need to take a nap, then, uh, you know, it just means that you probably didn't get uh, good enough sleep. If you chronically have to take naps all the time, then uh, that probably means that you're just your sleep at nighttime is quite bad. And uh, it's just a, like a association. I don't think that, you know, the napping itself is accelerating your biological age. It's just that if you need to take naps, then it... Um, is, is, it is indicative of something else like it means that your sleep quality is bad or you're like experiencing jet lag or this circadian rhythm mismatches you're doing shift work like people who do shift work are probably the ones who nap the most so uh, it's a like a indirect sign of something else it's not that the you know napping is causing you to age faster i think the napping will have like some protective effects even if you do like shift work and stuff like that so if you do shift work and you don't nap then that's probably worse than not napping at all but if you do need to nap 
chronically all the time and you're feeling sleepy during daytime, then it probably means that your sleep generally isn't that, that good. Sucks! Higher body fat percentage, higher body mass index, those are pretty self-explanatory. Obesity is gonna take at least, you know, uh, five to 10 years of your life. If you get diabetes as well, then that's additional five or 10 years. So uh, yeah, like with a BMI above 30, then you're in the very kind of risk zone or a danger zone. Higher C-reactive protein, that's just generally like a marker of inflammation, which also makes sense that, yeah, if, you know, if you have high CRP all the time, then uh, it just means that your body is under more oxidative stress and inflammation from whatever cause it could be. The high CRP can come from smoking, it can come from the excess drinking, it can come from the visceral fat, it can come from sleep deprivation, it can come from high body fat percentage, it can come from the BMI. It's more, more of like a reflection of something else that is going on. Next up, higher triglycerides, so fatty acids in the bloodstream. Usually if people have high triglycerides, then they have like some aspects of metabolic syndrome, which uh, actually refers to more like an improper glucose metabolism and some aspects of insulin resistance. So eating a lot of fat generally doesn't like raise your triglycerides as long as you're metabolically healthy. The triglycerides tend to rise and stay elevated if you have insulin resistance and you're also eating like a bunch of carbs at the same time. So it's more like a processed food intake that uh, generally causes the triglycerides to rise. So again, it's like a reflection of a bad diet and poor metabolic health generally. Childhood obesity, that's interesting. So, uh, you know, if you have some diabetes or obesity in your youth then it's much easier to get some actual metabolic syndrome and heart disease it's much easier to get it later in life as well because you're already causing damage to your metabolism now it doesn't mean that if you have a childhood obesity then you're like destined to die prematurely you can always reverse that you can always turn the tides uh, in your favor again and uh, regain your longevity like you can easily lose the weight you can easily improve your insulin sensitivity you can easily improve your metabolic health and you can easily reverse your biological age at uh, no matter the age you're at and lastly type 2 diabetes again makes sense as well uh, which uh, has been shown to actually reduce life expectancy by up to five to ten years in addition to that there were actually two protective factors that were uh, associated with uh, reduced biological aging and they are number one, education, and number two, household income. So those may make sense as well to a certain extent. If you have more money, more disposable income, then you can, you know, afford more health care. You can afford different supplements. You can afford better food. Generally, you have less like financial stress. You have less socioeconomic stress and those kind of things, more time and more opportunity to take care of yourself unfortunately or fortunately you know whichever point you're looking at so there you have it a quick overview of this study of the 10 top 10 factors associated with accelerated biological aging like i said it doesn't matter what age you're at it doesn't matter what your health is currently at you can always turn the tides and you can start reversing your biological age if you're interested in doing that then email me the word health to info at and i'll send you the details but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click the like subscribe notification bell as well my name is Seem, stay optimized, stay empowered.